So this video is actually a follow-on from the advanced text adventure I made a little while back and it's just going to go through actually how to create some other classes and then how to kind of get these things interacting together a little bit better. So um, a couple of things just to point on first of all, um, what I've got in front of me here is kind of a slimmed down version of what we did at the beginning, it's just the hero class. And one thing which I did make a note of in the last video, but you might need to go back and check, is that in order for our guests and setters to return, everything needs to be indented in the same line. So I think um, I'd actually indented these ones in line with the attributes here which means we wouldn't actually be able to access these guests and setters. We want everything in line over here. I'll give you some examples of these guys working a bit as well. Um, and secondly, um, all the code for these are actually going to be uh, linked in the description, um, so you can have a little look at that and sort of play around with it yourself. Um, I always think that it's actually better to do the coding yourself as you're learning, but I've had a lot of requests to get the code, so um, it is there if you want it, but don't substitute that for actually coding it yourself. So, let's get on. We need to make a enemy class for this, and then we're going to use a couple of text files to automatically randomly generate this file, uh, this enemy. So just like we made our hero, we want to do class enemy, and then we are going to start exactly the same by initializing it, and then giving it some attributes. So I'm just going to push that up so you can see it's a little bit better. So def init. So this enemy is going to have a health, it's going to have an enemy attack, it's going to have an enemy kind of like a special move, and it's going to have a chance which will work out um, the exact probability of it actually hitting us. And obviously we're going to give it a name as well. One thing to point out as well, put spaces between your init uh, bit here or else it won't work. Um, you'll see that if you haven't got spaces, um, or not that side, on this side, um, you're, it'll go black. So remember, you need your space there. Um, well, the both sides doesn't matter, but as long as you've got the space there, so that in it is blue. So we've actually got our um, arguments that we want our class to take. Now we're going to initialize these just the same as we did before. So self.health equals ehealth, and I'm going to speed this up because you guys all know how the rest of this works. Oh, just before I go, I'm actually going to code in consistency. That H should be lower, okay? So I'm going to whiz through these, and then you're going to see this all initialized. So there we go, there's all of our attributes, and um, just exactly the same, once we set a new character, it will um, pass whatever we've set into the uh, initializer to create the um, en the enemy for us, so we can just create them using um, just a setup like before, but we'll go through it in a second. Um, now we just need to do the getters and setters, so just like before, we want to define these, but remember, we're in line, so all the definitions are slightly defined, so Define and get health. So just this literally, just like I said before, just returns each of the um, different attributes because it's, it's um, we shouldn't be accessing them directly. So we can use these functions to return and set them. So um, it just makes that part a little bit easier. So I'm going to whiz through the getters now because it's exactly the same as this statement, but you should do it for all of the attributes. All right. So those are our getters. Uh, sorted and now we just do our setters so exactly the same again as our previous setters so set health to start and it takes two arguments the self and the new health so whatever we are setting as self dot health equals whatever the new health is that we've passed to it and we're going to do this for all of them So that's all of our, um, that's our basic enemy class all set up. Um, so this will, from this we'll be able to make a basic enemy with a health attack, a special, a chance to hit and a name. Um, but you also might want to make like a boss enemy or something like that. And because we've already got all of these attributes made, what we're going to do is we're going to create another class which is going to be the boss. We're going to inherit the enemy class, so this will be like the parent class and a boss will be a child of it. So we'll inherit this, and then we're going to um, actually add a couple of more attributes that a boss character would have. 
I'll just show you how to do that in Python. So again, exactly like setting out a normal edit, uh, sort of a normal class, we want a class and then its name, and then in brackets, um, what we want to inherit. So we want to inherit from the enemy class. Now, we're going to do our def init again, and we are going to say which, um, what arguments this is going to take. So again, it's going to take it needs to take everything that it has here in the same order. So I'm just going to take a copy of these quickly and I'll paste them into here. So it takes all of those first of all, but then it also takes, um, let's say that this enemy has like a super move as well. So we'll have a value, so an enemy super move. Now in order to actually inherit it, we need to use um, this function called super. So super basically says um, is is what we need to inherit uh, the initial uh, the previous classes um, attributes that we've listed here. So we've got enemy, and we're saying these here are enemy class uh, parts of the enemy class. So this super attributes will look in here. And then we'll actually inherit the ones which appear in enemy. So if we look at this, um, so we're going to say, tell it what to uh, inherit. So here, super.init, we've actually said, okay, use a super function um, and inherit these parts of the enemy class. So basically it just means that we're not going to have to do all the getters and setters and all the rest of it. We can actually inherit those things which have already been created. The only thing we need to get and set is the E super move. So what we want to do for this is open up here, we're going to do self dot uh, sorry, self dot super move and we're just going to do exactly the same. So here's our initialization of super move. And then we're just going to do a getter and set for super move exactly as we've done before. And that's it. Um, the nice thing about using inheritance this way is that we can create a whole new uh, class basically with uh, a fraction of the work now. So if I wanted to create a, a super duper boss, I could inherit boss and then I could go from there. I could inherit enemy again, just add a few different attributes and the rest of it. But this is basically how um, our standard form of inheritance works here. Um, so you might want to play around with that and create different types of enemies by inheriting your uh, base class of enemy and then just sort of changing it slightly with different types, maybe like, uh, I don't know, different element types of enemies and things like that. You could you kind of work, work around that. So we've done all this work. Let's actually have a little look here actually creating um, uh, something which will automatically generate an enemy for us. Um, we could also we could create an enemy just by plugging in these different arguments and then just running the program. But actually, I think it'd be more interesting to actually create an enemy using um, sort of a little bit of uh, randomization and some other techniques. And um, what I've got on the desktop here are two different uh, text files. I've got a list of adjectives, like tons, tons, tons of different adjectives. I've put this all in the GitHub files for you to take, but I just um, just download these off the internet and just stuck them into a text file and um, there's no commas in here or anything like that so that's a massive list of adjectives and I've got a massive list of animals as well um, and from this what, we, what we'll do is we'll um, take an adjective and we'll have that as our first word for our enemy and then we'll take an animal and have that for the second word of the enemy so every time we uh, generate an enemy, it'll have a random adjective and a random uh, animal in it as well. So it'll kind of, um, sort of reduce the amount of repetitiveness because you're always going to be kind of fighting different enemies with uh, loads of different names. So let's just have a little look. I'll show you how this works. We create a function called uh, enemy gen, and it's going to take the uh, argument of um, well, this is kind of just going to be uh, a boolean argument that we're going to uh, we're going to uh, we're going to give it in a second. So basically, this will put a true or false in here. If it's true, it will generate a level boss for us, so it will generate this boss enemy. And if it's false, it will generate a normal enemy for us down there. And um, we can work, when we actually start making the actual main of the program, we'll work out how to actually uh, make this kind of toggle between the two so we get a nice uh, kind of consistent picture of generating normal enemies and generating bosses. So it takes this boolean, this level boss here, and 
And what it does, we're going to create an empty list here to start. And we're going to open, first of all, the adjective file. So file equals open. Open it in read-only mode, and we're going to go through it as normal. There are a quicker way of doing this, kind of compiling these two lines into one, but I like to keep it separate because it's easier to kind of, when you read through the code the first time you're kind of working with files, it's very really easy to see what's happening. You're opening the file, you're reading all the lines of the file, you're then choosing a random line in the file, and so on. Um, if you start uh, messing around with other bits and pieces, it, it gets a little a little more difficult to um, actually explain what all the different pieces of the code are actually doing. Okay, so like I say, this, this looks a little bit long here, but I'll just explain what's happening. So we're going to look in this lines actually contains every single line um, which is in the adjective file at that time. So it, it's read all these different lines in. If we choose uh, uh, basically, we're going to choose a random line from that. So the adjective we're going to pick is going to be a position. So we're looking at lines here, and the square brackets means there's a position. We're just giving it an option. We're just actually saying the position that you want is going to be a random integer between 0 and the amount of lines in the file minus 1. So we do minus 1 because basically it reads from 1 all the way down to however many files, but obviously our indexing starts from 0 and goes to um, you know, uh, all the way through. So there's going to be a, a, a minus one difference between the two. And this here, um, basically, because each one of these has a new line symbol at the end of it, you can't see there's a slash n symbol at the end of it. It means if we read these in, it would say like defiance slash n. Well, if we put this at the end of here, it just means remove whatever symbol is at the end of the line. So this here is actually a nice way just to remove that slash n quite, quite quickly. And then we're going to close it. And then we're going to do exactly the same for our animal. And that's it. So one thing we've got to make sure we do is at the top here, we've got to make sure we've imported random for this to work. Okay, so we might have done that in the last episode, but just make sure you've imported random or it's just not going to work. So this is going to import our um, adjective and our animal so that we can um, always uh, generate something completely new. So. This bit here actually works from the boolean that was passed to it. So if level boss, if this boolean here, which has been passed to it, is false, so basically if um, we're saying don't generate boss, we're going to just generate um, a normal um, a normal enemy. So our normal enemies had a health, they had an attack, they had a special, and they had a chance. And I'm going to randomly generate these. So I'm going to do random dot rand int, and I'm going to say the health will be generated between fifty and 100. Okay, and I'm actually going to do exactly the same for all of the other attributes. I've just return, I'm just generating these um, random attributes here. Um, you know, the, these are low level enemies, so an attack somewhere between 1 and 10, a chance again between 1 and 10, it's going to make it easier to work stuff out later, a special between 10 and 20. So they're quite low level enemies in comparison to our hero. And then once we're done, what we want to do, we want to return all of these attributes, so just like this. So we're going to return all these attributes. This here returns our adjective plus our animal, but puts a space in between them. So it's going to generate our name with a space in between it, basically. Just keep so that you can actually read it properly. And then if we've not generated, uh, so if the level boss comes in as true, we want to actually generate a, a boss instead of a um, just a normal enemy. So what we want to do, we're going to set all of these attributes again. But we're going to do it with um, bigger, so sort of bigger values. We see here that I'm setting all these. My chance is a little bit lower, which means that the um, the element, the boss, will have a higher chance of being able to hit our our character, so it make them harder. And obviously, we all, we need the super move attribute as well. And then when we return this time, we're going to return exactly the same as before, but we also need to return the super move at the end. One thing I've just noticed, I've just um, called this files, that should be file, and again here we've got file, so we've got these two here, 
are mirroring each other. And finally, we actually return these. We want to actually create the object. So here when we're returning these enemy attributes, we want to call the class enemy and then just return the arguments in order. So if we're returning it this way, it's saying call the class enemy, these attributes which I've just created are the ones to be plugged in um, and therefore create the enemy. And then we can do exactly the same with the boss as well. So we're just calling the boss and we're plugging in the attributes that we've just created and then we're saying return this boss object that you've just created from the boss class and these attributes we've just generated. So it's going to be completely um, random these enemies and these bosses. So let's try it and let's have a quick look here. So we're going to just create a quick variable here. Level boss equals false and then we are going to do um, our enemy, so enemy1 equals the function enemy generator or enemy gen, sorry, and the boolean for level boss. So because this boolean is set to false, this will call the enemy generator and it will go into this false bit and it will create a enemy object from our enemy class, so not a boss object. Um, and then let's just print out these variables so you can see what actually gets created. One. Now it's very important that you don't make a mistake here and call your object the same as your class enemy, okay? It's, um, because that is something which happens from time to time and then what, you'll have, what will happen is it'll run once and it'll throw an error saying that um, the object enemy isn't callable because you've basically kind of overwritten it. So you want to make sure that you are na your naming is very different all the way through. So N01 is, is fine for this. So let's run it and see if it actually works. Okay, so we've generated the ugliest squirrel, poor thing. Um, an attack of two, chance of one, health of 88, and a special of 14. So with an attack of two and a chance of one, it's not going to have much chance of hitting you. And if it does hit you, it's not going to do much damage either. And the poor thing's called the ugliest squirrel. Um, so um, let's actually um, run this again and we'll generate another enemy. So here we go, we've got a totally different enemy here. So the name is the Elated Green Poison Dart Frog. Again, I just got all these animals and adjectives off the internet. So you can tweak these exactly how you want them. Um, and it's generated all of our attributes for us completely different from the last one. So if we wanted to generate a number of enemies, um, we just um, we could just do this. So now we can make as many enemies as we want. So as we just call each object we create a different name and then we're going to print them out. Uh, let's have a look see if this prints out nicely. Okay, so it's printing one out long ways, but it doesn't matter. So we've got a talented marmot that's been produced, we've got a pleasant cow which has been generated, and we've got an agreeable tree frog which has been generated as well. So you can obviously, you know, put whatever you want into these and it'll generate whatever you want. Um, let's flip this over to true and let's generate some boss enemies now and see if this works. So all this is flipped to true and this is now going to generate me three totally random bosses. So here we go. So it's generated the bosses here. Again, totally different. You can see they're all different attributes, all different names, but these ones now all have a super move with them as well that we can actually call and use um, later on. So that's it really for this for um, for this tutorial. Um, we are going to go through actually um, how to do the next part of this, so how to actually start working these into kind of like a game kind of thing. But for the time being, I think it's important to get used to um, the enemy class and the inheritance of the boss, and then using the enemy generator to generate whichever attributes you want from there. So I hope you found that useful, and um, I hope to see you next time.